Whoa, whoa, whoa. Sit back down. No, no. <laughs> what? What's all that? We gotta film this intro together, okay? Please just be a good co-host. Welcome to my corner of the World Wide Web. My name is Fats. This is Chai, my co-host. And I have a lot to catch you up on, actually. A lot of book stuff to catch you up on. I, uh, first off, we are not leaving the house this weekend. It is currently one in the afternoon. I finally caught up on some rest. I've been struggling with sleep throughout this week because my, um, when I sleep on my side, but the second I put pressure on the side of my face, I feel the agony that is wisdom teeth removal. So I haven't been sleeping too well. My antibiotics have been absolutely kicking me in the rear. And I need some days to stay in the house. I just need it. I know I work from home. I know that. I know. Um, I feel like sometimes I need to have a conversation with myself about like, Am I tired and do I need to get out and do I need to take care of my mental health and do I need to go experience something new or am I tired and do I need to listen to that exhaustion and just stay home? And I got ready this morning because I was telling myself that it was the kind of tired that I just needed to go do something and I'll feel better if I get out. But after I got ready, I had to be honest and I was like, this is your body healing from a surgery. Stay home, rest. The coffee shops aren't going anywhere. Make coffee at home. So I'm listening to that and we're gonna take it easy. It's gonna be an in the house, chatty little see what happens and take naps and rest and drink soup and Spoil the baby. That's going to be the weekend that we have ahead of us. But before we jump into reading, mind you, the first day is already halfway done. I needed that. I needed some bed. I needed some time in the bed. And I have no regrets. I feel like a lot of people on the internet feel like they need to be exciting on the camera. But like, you guys, this is a book channel. We're here for books. <laughs> um, with that said, I have some library pickups that we need to go over. First, top of, well, these aren't in any particular order. They're literally just stacked up next to me. But we have so much that I need to just loop you back into. Um, uh, just so you know, in this past week, I didn't read anything. I wasn't, I couldn't focus enough to get a book out. So the last time you saw me, the last vlog, that's the last time I read a book. And I'm feeling better this weekend. So I do miss reading. Let's, so I would like to get back into it with you. Um, first book that I have is Ring Shout. Now this book is on the discussion side of booktube. It is very much like a dystopian, racial discourse type of thing. Like, definitely adding a darker twist and a sci-fi turn to the diaspora almost. Um, uh, I believe it turns the clan members into zombies or something. It's something like that. It's a tiny little book. I didn't know it was a small. That is on my list of things to eventually get done. I also got another China Mie bill, The City and the City. Um, you know who you are, who influenced me to pick up another China Mie bill. I read um, Rail Sea in February, and I said that like I'm obsessed with China. One of you guys told me that this one was good, and I trust you. As a fellow China fan, I trust you. I don't know what it's about. I don't need to know what it's about. I have a book that is all over the, the tube and the talk. The Seven Year Slap. Story about a woman. She falls in love with somebody who lives seven years in the past, but they cross paths in like this time jumping apartment type thing. Then, 
monster lady. Sorry, I sped through that one. I haven't been in a romance mode. I'm not excited about it, but the library gives me three weeks. So hopefully in three weeks, I get into a romance mode. This one I'm excited about. This is Monstrillo by Gerardo Simona Cordova. This falls into that literary horror type of vibe that I'm really into recently. It is a story of a grieving mother who has just lost her son and she takes a piece of his lung and grows her son back from that. And her son turns into this carnivorous monster type creature and it's just a discussion of what it means to grieve and lose a child and the family dynamics that occur with grieving and hurt and pain and it adds of course a horror into that. Um, I'm excited for this one. Then I got a Vandermeer. Now, uh, I just jumped into Jeff Vandermeer this year, but I like how his brain works. He is the king of the weird. Like, there is no genre for Vandermeer. It is, his genre is his mind and what he is able to do with a space, a situation, bodies, creatures. Um, just listen, listen. A Mycenaic blue fox who slips through warrens of time and space on a mysterious mission. A homeless woman haunted by a demon who finds the key to all things in a strange journal. Three ragtag rebels waging in an endless war for the fate of the world against a ruthless corporation. A raving madman who wanders the desert lost in the past, besieged by his own creation. An invisible monster whose name he has forgotten and whose purpose remains hidden. This is a story of a city with no name, of its own wear, in the shadow of all powerful company and the lives of humans and otherwise converging in terrifying and miraculous ways. What's at stake? The fate of the future, the fate of Earth, all the Earths. I think this is gonna be good. I think there's a thing about Vandermeer's writing where I am lost sometimes. Lost in just the expansiveness that is his imagination. So it's a good kind of lost. I'm excited for this one. Um, I have White Oleander by Jeanette Fitch. I heard that Jeanette Fitch is a fantastic author and I heard that this one was one of her more popular books. It's the story of a brilliant poet in prison for murder and her daughter and her odyssey through the foster care system. I think it's a sad boy. One of those big, sad, reflective boys. I have an Ian Reed, same energy as Jeff Vandermeer. I enjoy his imagination. I enjoy how he writes. I read a tiny little book by him called Faux. This one is We Spread. And Faux was just this little snippet of science fiction that I really enjoyed from him. So I've got this one and I also have another book on hold of his, um, I'm thinking of Ending Things, his most popular book. So I just, I don't know what they're about. I just picked up some more. I wanted to see what he was about. Um, I have another one of my Booker Longlist books. I was interested in all, I, not was, I am interested in the Booker Longlist books. But like I said, I kind of fell off for a second. I've been, I've been resting, I've been reading, I've been Netflixing. I would like to get back into them. I would like to jump back on that train. This is one of the books that I had put on hold when I was introduced to the concept of the Booker Longlist and it just finally came in. Another Vandermeer. This is Born by Jeff Vandermeer. Look at the weirdness that is that cover. I don't know what it's about. I think it's one of those like weird creature discovery type of things. I don't know. I'm excited. Another one of my Booker Long List things. This is, oh, this is, this won, this won the Booker Prize. Study for Obedience. This was a winner. Oh, hmm. I guess this should be like my favorite of the Booker books because it won. Okay, those are all the standalones. I, we need to have an important discussion because I was sitting down and I am accidentally in the middle of so many series. There are several series that I'm just qu not quite interested in carrying on with. But there are also several that is just like, how did I get mixed up in so many? So just to catch you up on what's going on with my life, 
uh, let's talk about the series. Let's talk about them. Because first off, I picked up a new one. This is called Prince of Thorns. I am so excited about this book. Listen, 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 Linda. Beware the Prince of Thorns. When he was nine, he watched as his mother and brother were killed before him. By the time he was 13, he was the leader of a band of bloodthirsty thugs. By 15, he intends to be king. It is time for Prince Honorius George Ancroth to return to the castle he turned his back on to take what's rightfully his. Since the day he hung pinned on the thorns of a briar patch and watched Count Renard's men slaughter his mother and young brother, Jorik has been driven to vent his rage. Life and death are no more than a game to him and he has nothing left to lose. But treachery awaits him in his father's castle. Treachery and dark magic. No matter how fierce his will, can one young man conquer his enemies with power beyond his imagining? You can't tell me these covers. Look at these covers. You can't tell me this series won't be good. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't. So that's a trilogy. That is a series that I guess I've picked up. Sorry, I took I took notes on my phone so that I could remember all the series that I'm in. Um, okay, so then next, on audiobook right now, I started We Hunt the Flame. This one is a duology. I don't believe it's going to go any longer. I hope not. Because I can't handle anything else on my list right now. Now, this book so far, so I just started it on audiobook. This book so far, I've been introduced to a FMC who is like the only person that's able to go into the R's forest. It's like this magical forest where if you go into it, you start going crazy. She is the huntress. People don't know that she's a woman, so people refer to her as the hunter. Nobody else is really able to go into that forest. The other POV that I get is the prince. He's like a pawn of his father and he's just, he's not an assassin, but he is just a pawn, a killing machine, blood on his hands type of thing. I just started it. I'm 4% of the way through. But that's kind of what's going on there. These two are then introduced to this like quest to find a thing that will lift the magic of that scary forest. I don't know. It's written really well so far. I'm having a good time so far. That other series I'm in the middle of is the Game of Thrones series. I'm currently on the second book. I do own the Game of Thrones books. This is another one that I just audiobook though, um, because I can walk the dog. When it comes to these 600 page books, if I can get it on audiobook, I'm gonna audiobook it. I'm gonna be honest because I walk the dog a lot. I, 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 I I've got no other excuse. I'm gonna audiobook this one. Um, my next audiobook I think is like three, four weeks out. The Game of Thrones audiobooks, people are on hold for these books. So, excited to get into that. Next, I'm in a Vandermeer series right now. I had read Annihilation. This is my very first Vandermeer. I read it a, a couple months ago and I loved it, right? The second book, I have been on hold for this book for three months. It should come in in the next two weeks though. Finally, this is a story of like an Area X, this like enigmatic creepy presence that nobody really understands and they keep sending um like units of people to explore and map it out and those people keep going like crazy insane deteriorating coming back different so i don't know where it's gonna go from there in the first book it's a very short book all you get is like this um you are basically a part of one of those crews of people sent in and the expedition and that's the word I've, you saw me dancing around expedition you're part of one of these expeditions and um you don't know much that's part of what makes that first book so eerie you're part of the expedition into this area x that has no idea what's happening no idea what's going on and the fear and the tension and the anxiety that comes with exploring this strange weird otherness I believe the other two books start going into like what the government is doing a part of this or like where this area X came from, the history of it. I think it finally goes into that. Um, 
if whoever is holding on to the book finally gets rid of it because you know what happens i've been on hold for this book but i'm first in line so that means whoever has it just isn't returning it and they need to they need to get they need to get on top of it i am also on hold i don't have any yet for the never night series by jay kristoff now this is like an assassin vampire killer school academy the covers look cool i do believe i think this is an adult series i think all these series are adult series i'm not 100 percent sure but i do believe this one is the covers got me the third book that cover so cool so cool so cool so cool um i'm on hold D assassins vampires scariness craziness i am also currently have wolf hall that is a trilogy that i would like to get through it is a henry the eighth type of situation i have china mieville's boss log trilogy which starts with perdido street station i don't know anything about that i'm just obsessed with china mieville that's that sold on china mieville and i'm also i've been on hold for like four months for um the three body problem that's a trilogy i've been on hold for that one for three months and there's a netflix series that's either just now coming out or is out about it and it i know it's popular because even before the netflix series came out i i was number like 200 on the hold list i should be getting that in the next four or five weeks as well so those are all the series that i'm currently in the middle of and i would love to be able to clean this up by the middle of the year my mid-year reading goal is to just clean those up that is prince of thorns never night we hunt the flame game of thrones southern reach wolf hole perdido street station three body problem it's just eight series it's just eight it's just eight series. What am I doing? My goals this weekend is nothing. I just had a recent talk with myself about when a book is coming up to be due and the due date is coming up. I've been reading my books recently in like a due date type of situation. Like what's next due, what's next due. That's kind of what I've been doing. And the talk I had to have with myself is like, even if I have to return it, I can put it on hold again. It's not like once it's due, that's all there is and it disappears forever. I need to stop having that scarcity mindset when it comes to these library books. If I don't get to it, I don't get to it. I shouldn't be pushing myself to read something just because it has a timeline on it. And I think it's really been affecting how I've been reading and it's been affecting how I've been feeling about books these past couple weeks, actually. I've, I've enjoyed my books. Don't get me wrong, I have enjoyed my books, but I feel like I would enjoy the process of reading my books more if I wasn't constantly thinking about these hold dates. I have 30 books in my home right now, and I have like 25 more on hold. I shouldn't be so focused on what's due. If it's due, it's due. If I have to wait another three months, I have three months of books in my home. And if I don't want to read it right now, I shouldn't push myself to read it. So let's, let's get better about mood reading. That's, I guess, the focus of this restful weekend. The focus of this weekend is listening to my body, checking in with myself and my energy levels and taking a nap when I feel tired, laying down when I'm feeling tired this week, and mood reading. That was such a long intro. I just had so much I wanted to say to you guys before I took my outdoor clothes off and put on my pajamas again. I'm probably gonna take my contacts out too. I'm not, I'm not for it today. We, I need to clean up. The house is a bit of a mess. That's okay though. Who cares? I'm the only person that's in here. Let's, let's, let's read something.
What the actual cuss did I just read? Okay, before I even get into my, I, while I try to get my feelings under control, I marked a page. I just thought the writing was beautiful. So I'm gonna read you that and uh, then we'll talk. Um, to give you some, uh, sorry, I'm just, what is happening? <laughs> China Mievo, are you? Uh, let me read you this piece. So, Saul, right? Did I even tell you? I haven't even told you what is happening. Okay, Saul. He has been framed for his father's murder. He gets home um, late at night, goes straight to bed. And then the next morning, um, the police bust down his door because his father is found splattered on the ground outside, thrown out of the window, right? And Saul gets thrown into prison. They're going to question him. But they basically have it. Like, it's a wrap. Saul is the bad guy. That is how the entire police force is feeling, right? And then a man busts in, right? He's, he's slinky, he's slick, he's oily, he's greasy. He has a smell of like rubbish, rank, and rot about him. And he goes, hey, I'm King Rat, and I'm here to break you out. Uh, no time to think, Lego. And this man like throws Saul on his back. He's climbing up rooftops. He's jumping across gutters. He's just making his way about town. And then Saul just has no idea what's going on. And the man at the part that I'm going to read you, he's explaining to Saul, like, you're a rat. Like, you are also a rat. And here, I know you're hungry. Eat some trash. Because Saul's like, I'm not. That's not. I'm not going to eat some trash. And so this, this is what happens, right? Um, he's holding out, like, a half-eaten burger to Saul. And Saul is like, oh, <laughs> ew. And King Rat goes, um... When was the last time you puked? Saul furrowed his brow at the question. King Rat wiped his wet hand on his trench coat, adding to the camouflage pattern of stains hidden in its dark gray. He poked at the food. You don't recall, he said without looking at Saul. You can't recall because you've never done it. Never spewed nothing. You've been ill, I bet. But not like other godfers. No colds or sneezing, only some queer sickness making you shiver for days once or twice. But even then, not a sign of puke. He finally met Saul's eye and his voice dropped. He hissed at him, something like victory in his voice. Got the notion your belly won't rebel? No sicking up pigs, no matter how plastered. No sweet, sticky chocolate bile on your pillow the night after Easter. No hurling seafood across the tiles. No matter how dodgy the takeaway, you've got rat blood in your veins. There's nothing you can't stomach. There was a long silence as the two stared at each other. King Rat continued, and there's more. There's no grub you don't want. Said you were starving. I said, Coco, it's been a while. Well, here you go, sitting comfortably. I'm going to teach you what it is to be a rat. Look at all this scran your uncle sorted you out with. Said you were starving. Here's breakfast. King Rat picked up the fruitcake without taking his eyes from Saul. He raised it slowly to his mouth. Moist chunks dropped from his hand. Sultanas made juicy from long marinating in black plastic. He bit into it. Crumbs bursting out of his mouth. He exhaled in satisfaction. I read you that because... <sighs> so first, let me just... Let me try to get myself together. Let's talk about what was done so insanely in this book. The characters. A Nazi? First of all, a Nazi. A Nazi? Okay. Let's talk about Anansi for a second. There is a character, he's Anansi, he's a spider. And he's described as this dark black man with extremely long arms and legs, right? Why does this man speak in like black voice? <laughs> what is happening? China me Avel made a choice, but like at the same time, I was reading and I was like, is this black voice? But like, go off queen <laughs> like i can't be mad at it because that is a nazi like there is a minstrel feel to a nazi almost like there is a point where a nazi feels like this caricature of blackness and being this like spider character creature type thing that originates from african um mythology me made a choice 
And I can't be. This book was written in 1995. Like, Mieva, you knew better. But also, like, he made that choice. And he, he if you're going to go for it, go for it as hard as Mieva did. Like, with the Anansi character. So that's the first character. Secondly, the character of... Baby. Baby. The character of King Rat? The way his voice like lilts and the way he's just this like greasy thing that slinks in and out of the darkness and carries this like sort of stench to him. It was, it was, he was so well written because he is a person, but that ratness, that, that he had this frantic energy. He had these highs and lows. He had this, he had this violence to him and it was, he was so well written as a rat. Um, La, what was this? Lop Lop? Another character, the bird? What is even happening? Okay, because this doesn't even make sense. Let me just, let me just give you the 30 second rundown of what was going on, right? So a boy is framed for his father's murder and then a rat king man decides to take him down into the sewers and train him how to be a rat. But this boy is special because he's not really just a rat. He's a rat and a boy, but also he doesn't really know who his true father is. But when he finds out who his true father is, that is absolutely wild because, oh my gosh, this man has been lying to him the entire time. And then one of his friends is being used by the Pied Piper. The Pied Piper is a bad guy, which is absolutely crazy. And the Pied Piper is the enemy of the, the rats, the spiders, and the, the birds. But the birds and the rats and the spiders can't get along to get rid of the Pied Piper and the Pied Piper is going to take over and he's going to take over the humans as well and the humans don't even know what's going on and then there's a big battle and then everybody dies. The end. What is happened? What did I just read? This man is just like, he like, <laughs> set the rats free and he's like no more rat monarchy this is a rat republic i'm not the rat king i'm a rat citizen what did i just i had a good time i had a good time some choices were made I, I... if those choices were made today we would have to have discourse i am forgiving those choices for being 20 years i'm China Miedo, you made choices. I had a good time. I think I did. What is I you guys? <laughs> I need like I need I need just a jolly good time now. You know, like a palate cleanser. <laughs> For those palate cleansers, I think I might do bookshops and bone dust for bed tonight. Or I've got a larger book. I might do The Binding by Bridget Collins. It is bigger. I'll do this if I just want to power through something. But this is the prequel to Legends and Lattes. And this is just a pretty little fantasy. It's a story about... Let me... Hold on. Give me a second to remind myself. Okay, yeah. So books are binded and held and they hold like memories and secrets but once the books hold them they are erased from people's minds and they no longer exist in the world only certain people of course can be hired to bind books and of course our main character is like you're special like because you know the main character is always special they're like hey you're a book binder come in and the story i think like really opens up because our main character finds a book that holds knowledge that they maybe shouldn't have found and then like i think there's a lot of political intrigue a lot going on this might be good this is like a gentle good time this is gonna be like a nice fantastical good time i love jenna mia though you guys i am having i am so happy that i found this author this year like this is like <laughs> so weird oh my gosh the descriptions of music hold on let me find a description of music before i take my son out um and the thing is i um i don't like me it all has to have a history in music the way that he wrote about he wrote he writes about a flute right um 
She turned the volume down slightly and pulled another rhythm out of her collection. Um, the person that we're reading about, she's a DJ. This time the drums came crashing out of nowhere. The bass came chasing after, filling out the snare and framing the sound with a funky backdrop. She threw in a few minimal shouts and snatches of brass, looped a moment of trumpet, but the, but the treble was subdued. This was an offering to the man outside, and it was all about rhythm. The beats looped once, twice, then sailing up from the street came a thin snatch of music. The man outside, he's playing his flute. A trill of flute that mimicked the looping repetition of her own music, but elaborated on itself, changed a little with every cycle. He was standing below her window, his hastily assembled instruments to his lips. He had made good on his arrogance. She would have been disappointed if he had not. She stripped the beat down and left it to loop. The, the flute skittered over the drums, teasing the beat, touching just enough to stay anchored, then transporting itself. It suddenly became a series of staccato flutterings that lilted between drum and bass, now wailing like a siren, now stuttering like Morse code. If Mievel does not play an instrument himself, you can tell he loves music. That's what, like, I think I have so much fun with in these books. Mievel puts his entire soul into his books. Mievel has a voice. He has a voice. He loves his voice. And he writes with his voice. Oh, my gosh, it is so good. Ugh. Um, I haven't eaten since I started reading. It is 6.30 p.m. <laughs> my... Sweet baby son is so sick of me. When I get wrapped up in a book, I'm like, I promise I'll take you out, peace. Um, he needs attention. I need some fresh air. I need to get outdoors. I'm feeling energized. I'm so glad I'm taking the rest I need. Like, I'm so glad we made that decision, friend. Like, let's go get some fresh air. Let's feed and nourish ourselves. Ah, uh, that was, uh, me, it strikes again.